Today, we're looking at a method to get your expiration rank up to elite fairly quickly while making some decent credit in the process. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Recently, there's been this method floating around called the Road to Riches. Um, it's a method made by Commander Victic, I think his name was. Um, and what he's done is he's compiled a list of high value systems that has high value um, bodies that you can scan and get um, some decent exploration data out of. He compiled a, a list of those and now he's made a web tool where you can go in and it will then make you a route using some kind of traveling salesman algorithm to give you an optimal route between these systems, um, giving you a list of systems and bodies you need to go to. And this is going to allow you to get your expiration rank up quickly. So you can see here, your expiration rank here, get that up to, uh, to elite fairly quickly and uh, get you access to, um, to some of uh, the furthest world, for instance, if that's what you want to do. Um, and also you're going to make some decent credit in the process. I have heard people making around about 15 millions per hour. Um, some people say if they are not paying attention to what they're really doing, just what doing it while watching something else, they'll do around eight. So it's, Around there, 8 to, uh, to 15 million per hour is probably what you could expect uh, from doing this. And just to try and prove that you can actually do this pretty early on in the game, because you don't need any uh, the, the requirements for outfitting is not very high. You don't need any specific factions that you need high standing for or anything. Um, so it's it's actually pretty uh, pretty easy to do pretty early on. So just to um, to start, about, let's have a look at the, uh, at the outfitting you're going to need. I'm going to use this Cobra. I highlighted this uh, specific ship in um, in my um, your first exploration ship video. There's going to be a link to that somewhere up here um, in the more info icon. So um, I changed the setup a little bit just because I want to upgrade it a bit, but that makes the setup a little bit more expensive. But basically what you need is to get your jump range up as high as you can possibly get it. Um, in this case, it's 24.8 um, unengineered. You can get get it higher with other ships, but again, I just want to show you that you can do it in a, ch a cheap ship you can get early on in the game. Um, core internals, I highly recommend you get an A-rated frameshift drive. It's going to make your life so much easier. Um, for optional internals, what you really need is a fuel scoop. I got it with A-rated. You don't need that. You can use a smaller um, class fuel scoop or the class of uh, great fuel scoop, like go with... B, C, maybe even D-rated, but it will take you longer to, for, to refuel along the way, though. But... Um, you can't go with a... Uh, I, I've gone with an A-rated just because um, there was room for it on the ship. Then you, of course, need a de detailed surface scanner. This is going to allow you to scan the bodies out there um, and collect that. Very important data that you're going to bring back and sell and get a lot of the money out of. Then you're going to need an advanced discovery scanner here. Um, and this is, of course, so you can scan the system. You can't go with an intermediate. Um, I would recommend going for an advanced if you have the money for it. Um, but again, intermediate. But again, you can go over my, my whole setup um, in, the, uh, in the video that I linked in the more info icon. So, um, what you need to do is uh, you need to head over to Reddit. And there's a link to this Reddit post in, uh, in the description down below. And here we have the post by, uh, by Commander Victic, which you can see here. And he's explaining it. He has two previous posts that you can also go if you want to go into more details with this. But basically what we need here, it is the Road to Riches online version. And we're gonna, gonna go ahead and open that. So this is the tool, looks pretty simple. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna type in the system that you're currently in. Um, I'm in Shinrata Deshra, so we're gonna type that in. Um, max distance from start, or max distance from start, how many light years do you wanna go from your starting location? Um, for this trip, it's gonna be a small one. Let's just go 200. Max systems in the route. How many systems do we want to be in the route? How long do we want it to be? Basically, let's just oh, 700. See, that's the max. See how many it can actually give us. And you can click Get Route. And it will then compile a list of systems that you can go to. Um, you can also uh, get this in a text form. If you would rather have this on um, in a text document, you get this in a very copy-paste friendly version. You just take this and copy-paste it. And what you basically need to do is first we're going to go to the system call 285 sector i see this set blah blah you get it here um and there we need to go to um let's get this up a little bit easier this planet here planet one 
here's the distance from the warbin. This is a terraformable water world. I need to uh, <laughs> remember my abbreviations here. Um, so this is the terraformable water world. We're going to scan it, and once we're done with that, we're going to move on to MCC 582. First world again, distance we have here, and um, and then the uh, abbreviation is then set here. I think you explained this over here in the Reddit post uh, as well. Um, and that's basically it. You see some of them have two um, two planets, some of them have a lot, like this system. This is a very good system, apparently. High metal content worlds. Um, and you basically just go through this list one at a time. Um, and once you feel like you're you either getting bored with it or, or you're done with the list, you head back to a station and you sell the exploration data. So um, let's, uh, let's head out uh, with our ship here and, uh, and let's see how this works. Okay, so we are coming into, um, I think, the system before our first destination, actually. Um, so right now we are still uh, one jump out. But I thought, thought, uh, I thought I would just give you guys some tricks to uh, what I do when I land in the system. First thing I do is begin to turn towards the system, of course, I need to go to. And I honk my um, my discovery scanner. There we go, just to discover all the bodies in the system. And then I go through the uh, upper atmosphere of the star. And you can see here... Now I actually got a little bit too deep. Ideally what you want is to just to scoop through the upper atmosphere of the star, just collecting a little bit of fuel as uh, as you move around the star. And as soon as you leave the atmosphere, you can start your frameshift drive. And that way you should not overheat. Don't start while you're inside the atmosphere, you're going to overheat. Um, so wait until you're outside the atmosphere to start your frameshift drive and then jump into the system. So we are in our first system. We're going to honk the system and we're not going to, we're going to go to planet one, which is Obviously, gonna be the first one here. You can also look at the distance, so we know from the the, the sheet that this was uh, 59, which is this one here. Um, it moved up to 80 because we were flying in the wrong direction when we entered the system. So target lock it, um, and just begin to fly towards it. You'll uh, see in the the lower right corner, sorry, uh, lower left corner, that once we get close enough to the planet, our detailed surface scanner should automatically begin to scan this. Um, to scan this planet. And while you're flying towards it, you can go over to your uh, your sheet and copy paste the next system in uh, in route. See, now we're close enough. We're gonna slow down, so we're not gonna overshoot it while it is scanning. You slowly get closer until it's, it's completely scanned. Keep that timer there um, around eight or nine seconds. So there we go, water world. Um, so now that we're done with uh, with this one, we're gonna open up our galaxy map, and we luckily we just copy pasted or copied the um, come on, we just copied the uh, the system name, so we're gonna paste that in there. We're gonna plot a route, and we're gonna continue on our route towards the next system. And this is pretty much it. You just rinse and repeat. Now we go to the next system, and of course, I'm in a fairly low jump range ship. Um, if you have a, a bigger ship, of course, you're going to have fewer jumps. You're going to be more efficient. You're going to use, you're going to get more, um, you're going to get more, more money out of it. I'm probably going to go through the first, um, I don't know, five systems, and then we're going to head back to the station, and uh, we'll then see how much uh, credit I made. So I just arrived in this rather interesting system, um, and I thought I would use this as a good example to. Um, to show you how you can find the correct planet if you are in doubt. Because I'm going to put the um, to open up the galaxy map, so system map here. And I'm going to put up the uh, designation for the planets we need to visit. As you can see here, it's, it's maybe a little difficult to, uh, to understand exactly what's going on here. But so let's go over it in detail. Now, you can see here on the list that we have... Um, what do we, how many do we have? Five, eight planets we need to, uh, to visit in the system. Quite a good system, actually. So, um, the first one is AB4. Now, the first AB, that designates the star it, on which, around which the planet is orbiting. If there's only a single star in the system, the, um, the star will not be designated. It is, of course, implicit since there's only one star. But if there are more than one star, they will be designated in the solar system map A, B, C, and so forth. So stars in order will just be alphab uh, alphabetic. Um, AB indicates that the... Um, that the planets are orbiting around the common center of mass of both stars. So as you can see here, these two stars here, because of this line here, we can see that they are orbiting around each other, and here's their common center of mass. So this point would actually be called AB, this point right here. 
And this star down here is then, of course, orbiting around that point. So this star is, of course, called C. So if we want to go to AB and we want to go to planet 4, that would be that one. And we also need to go to planet 5, 6, 7, and 8. And when you see these brackets here, that means that these two planets are also orbiting each other um, while they're, orb they're orbiting around the star. So those should be pretty close to each other, and these two should be pretty close to each other. This moon down here, for instance, we don't have to go to that. But if uh, if that were the case, that would be AB to A. Because this is uh, the first one. Or if there were more moon, then it would be AB to A, B, C, D. And if there were even moons orbiting this moon, it would then be AB to A, A. If there were a second moon orbiting this moon. So that's how the whole naming scheme is. Um, so if you ever have a, having trouble finding the right planet, that's how you do it. The only thing that's indicated by numbers are the planets. Otherwise, everything else is just indicated by um, by letters. Um, so um, I'm going to explore the system, and then I'm probably going to going to head back towards uh, the station, so we can see um, how much credit uh, we actually make doing this. So to wrap this whole thing up nice and neatly, here we are back at Jameson Memorial, where we started the whole thing. Um, I just went to the first six systems in um, in the list. Um, and let's go ahead and see uh, what kind of credits we make. You can see, I think, here we have Call Sector. That was one of the first systems we uh, we visited. 630,000 credits for that system. That system was on the list as well. Just a million there. Here we have another one. I think that was on the list as well. Let me check. Yes, it was. Two plants in that system. I actually have it here over here. You can see you have a details uh, scan. How much we got from that. Um, let's go. Ooh, there was one. That's a good one there as well. And uh, finally, the system. Where's that? If you can find that. Oh, there it is. Very good system here. We scanned a total of eight planets in uh, in this system when we uh, we just been uh, been looking at 3.3 million. Um, and for this short trip, we managed to get ourselves uh, seven and a half million credits, which is actually not too bad. Um, unfortunately, I cannot tell you how much this will increase my rank. I'm already elite explorer. Explorer. Wow. Um, so. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and let's uh, confirm that we're going to sell that. Let's cash in the credits. Um, and that's pretty much it. Of course, um, I spent, I think, a total of, of an hour doing this. Um, but again, I spent a lot of time actually flying back because I was running through the list and I had to get all the way back to the station. If you do you did a longer trip, I definitely think that uh, without too much hassle, you can, in a ship like this, easily get over the 10 million per, per hour doing this. Um, and if you have a decent ship, you're probably going to look at around 15 or even more. Um, and you're going to increase your exploration rank um, quite uh, quite fast. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.